Okay, I think the recording has started. Uh, let me show my screen and then we'll start. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. So uh, I have created like a simple request study for like this tutorial. Uh, it's just like one notebook like that we're gonna look look into. So if you want, you can check out like the repository later. So if we get started, like basically in a normal Python program, like in a normal scenario, you don't really wanna write like a synchronous code. For example, if you are writing a code in a notebook for some exploration, like asynchronous programming wouldn't be like that much of a value for you. But like when you have like a services, like for example, a web application, then it becomes important like the responsiveness of the web application. For that, you would have to start considering asynchronous programming. Uh, like basically, let's say you have an API call to like a given provider, maybe that provider is OpenAI. Now, when you make an API call, that might take like two, two minutes or three minutes. Uh, and like if your website is going to be responsive, like for those two minutes, that would be a bad experience for the client that's using your web application. So for that, you would wanna like run that in a background task uh, and like in the meanwhile, like show some different result or give them some information. So basically that would be what you'd be able to achieve using asynchronous programming. Uh, like the advantages are like it's number locking, uh, improves performance, meaning like while you're waiting for a response from a given API, you can perform some other tasks uh, or you can even perform tasks in parallel. So in terms of performance and like user engagement, it would really improve your system significantly. Uh, for this, I've added a simple example, uh, which is like first we do synchronous data fetching. Like this is just to demonstrate an API call. So let's assume like this fetch data is sync is making an API call, uh, we'll print the first statement when we make the first call, uh, and then we'll delay for some time to show like the time it will be taking when we call a given API, and then finally we'll be getting the result. Uh, so to demonstrate that, like we'll call like API one, just give it a name called API one, and then wait for three seconds. So API one will take three seconds to give us a response, API two would give wait two seconds. Uh, and if we run this call, as you can see, like API one had sent the request, got a result, then API two makes a request and then gets a result. So the whole time like API one was making a request, we are waiting, we are like making another request. So synchronous programming, this is why it's broken. Uh, okay, I think there was a message. It's just, yeah, one person wants to, for you to enlarge a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I think it's maybe just because the back, dark background, maybe. I don't know. I, it's okay. visible for me. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Is this one better? Yeah. Yes, that is better, the white one. Okay, okay. So I think we can continue from here, right? This is like synchronous code. Basically, it has to wait for the one API call to finish to make the next API call. Uh, because of that, like it will, the whole request took us like five seconds, even though we are not doing anything, right? For so like when you make an API request, every process happens on the server. You are just waiting to get the response and you can basically use that time to perform different tasks but here because the code is synchronous we're just waiting uh, then like the same example now we run it asynchronously uh, so it's just the same function 
just it's asynchronous now. Uh, and we run async fetch, uh, async IO gather, like the function why it does is, so first, like to work in asynchronous in Python, we use this library called async IO. It's just a collection of libraries that would allow you to write asynchronous code in Python. Uh, like for example, like this async IO gather runs like the two tasks in parallel. So they wouldn't be blocking each other and they would be waiting, they wouldn't be waiting for one function to finish to start the next function. Uh, now here, like basically in a normal scenario, you wouldn't need like run async in a notebook. Like this is because like there is an event loop that's already running in a notebook environment. So you have to just get that event loop and like attach your task into that event loop. But in a normal Python code, you would just say async io dot run, and then it would run your task. Now, if we see, like, we, we make the first API call, as soon as, like, before getting the response for first API call, we make the second API call. Even the second API call, because it takes shorter time, it finishes, and then we get a result from the first API call. So basically, asynchronous implementation in Python is straightforward, it's just this. The only thing you have to be careful is like when you write your normal function, like execution step is like everything goes step by step. So that is like straightforward to think how the code would run. But now, like since like the fingers can run in different step, you have to be a, a little bit careful, like to give you a little bit of example, let's say we have a variable called x with a value of five. And then let's say, let's add a function called printx. And then we'll just wait for one second and then print the value of x. Uh, then we'll use this function to run Okay, so and then if I say x is seven, now you would expect in a normal scenario because the value of x didn't change until we get here, you would get five printed. But in this case, what happens is it will print out seven because this one is waiting and this part of the code got executed. So when you have asynchronous code, you have to be careful about like how things get updated. Like for example, if there's a function, it is better to pass in a value rather than use a glo global variable. If you pass in the value like this, it would print like the correct value. Uh, but still within a function, it would get a bit complicated. So may, like breaking the functions like into smaller elements, uh, following like separation of concern would really help. Uh, so if you have question, Regarding asynchronous programming, we we can address them before moving into like OpenAI and the other topics. I mean, I think people, I, I just want to say like, I think these are important parts as you get into web. So if you have some questions, really ask now, uh, especially, you know, the differences between trading, async I.O. and multiprocessing, things like that. Sometimes you hear them, and if you have any, uh, you know, uh, Elias would really be able to help to answer some questions on that because he has been working on these areas quite uh, a lot. So just, I wanna give you that opportunity. If you have questions, just feel free to ask. You may proceed, uh, okay. uh, and then when there are questions. Okay. So, I mean, one person is asking the difference between trade and async. So, if you could. Uh... Okay. Uh, trade, we, like async course, all, for example, when we run async code, it is just running in the same trade. 
the only difference is within that thread, like things wouldn't block each other. So like later when we get to salary, like we will look into like salary runs things as a different processes. Uh, but here, like we're just running on the same thread, but like we are utilizing that thread more efficiently. We don't wait for one process to complete to run into the next piece of line. Uh, okay, so to, if we start looking at OpenAI, like everyone knows OpenAI, they provide... Uh, Ashatu, Ashatu is asking about okay. where, where, we, where will we use this concept in the challenge or, or in real world environment? Okay, like for example, like in uh, Redash, like you're building Redash dashboard, right? So in Redash, like you might be making queries that can take like more than a minute, maybe, like depending on the database that's connected. So Redash actually uses in background salary, like to execute your, your queries. Uh, and now you are building on top of that, maybe like processing like natural language queries to generate like the queries that run uh, in Redash, right? So those might like making a request into OpenAI, getting a response from Op OpenAI, and then like those kind of things might take time. So like if you turn your code into asynchronous, then you can like one perform different tasks at the same time. Uh, and yeah, I think like the more you get into like developing the system and if we want to make it more responsive, more performant, then like this is just pretty much the only way. But like if you don't like care about like the time it takes, if you are just going for like a simple probable solution, then you can achieve it without using any synchronous code or like yeah. I, I mean I may add one. I mean, this is the, the heart of whether you know it or not, all the codes that you are using, including salary or you know the uh the back end that you are going to create whether you're creating with flask or we uh, we ask you another one that's also actually a flask but with a lot more async it is really because user queries are better run you know whenever you connect with apis and whenever you connect with database async will save you a lot because you can now parallelly connect multiple and fetch and as they as they come in you you show them so a very simple example that you may want to run different functions, like different, uh, so you can break down your user's query into multiple questions. One is to fetch data, you know, one is to ask which data, data table, the other one is, you know, whether we should answer or not, like this question, or the other one is whether it is actually, we don't need that, therefore, if the question just only involves uh, reading, like the YAML file of the visualization, then you send it. Now you have three tasks. If you do them concurrent, like if you do them is synchronously, then you probably will take you one minute to show to the user the result. But if you do it with a sync, then you would do it. You basically can show that one instead of one minute. Then you know you give it like in in ten seconds. That's the type of like element. Of course, we, we don't ask you now to really be good at it. It's just that you have to know that as you build, you might you might need to understand this concept to do what you do even just on this, on the challenge, on the current challenge as well. In real world, anything, whenever you build chatbots, without a sync, uh, you cannot build uh, real, like real life, basically very uh, active chatbots. The chatbot will basically be staying a lot and you know people will go away. So. To build a chatbot, it's even almost a necessary mandate that you do everything in a sync. So does that answer your question, Shatu? Okay. Go on, uh, I don't want to take time. Uh, so go on, Elias. Okay. So uh, let's move into like OpenAI. Like, so basically OpenAI provides like different models uh, and then there's a, they have an API access to those models. And then this is just to look to make a simple query to OpenAI, so to see like how you can use OpenAI. Uh, this is like pretty much straightforward. I don't think we have to spend that much time here. 
then uh, let's move into Redash. Uh, Redash, I think I don't have to explain Redash that much. Like you are, probably have been working with it. Uh, it just really makes it easy to work with your data. Like you can connect your database and uh, you make your queries and create visualizations from that and then create dashboard easily. Uh, the good thing, uh, the really interesting thing about Redash is like the way it utilizes async programming, meaning like whenever you don't even have to do anything for this, like if you make a, 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 sync, a query, like when you write a query, like it, it runs it in a salary task, so it wouldn't be blocking other tasks. Uh, so, like, if we look into salary, salary is like a distributed task queue, meaning like you, like, okay, now we have, like, we've talked about async programming, right? Now, why do we need salary? Like, let's say, like, the code you are writing, let's say it's I/O operation. In I/O operation, like, async programming wouldn't help you that much because you are already running in the same thread. Uh, and like still the like the operation that has to be performed, let's say it's reading file or that's really long, that perf has to be still performed. Like for example, if it's an API call, then you, you can just simply use async programming because there is not much you are actually doing. You're just waiting for the server to perform something and give you the result. But like if it's an I operation, like for example, database access is like an I operation, right? Then like there is no server that's performing the task for you. You're just performing the task. And if you just implemented using async IO, like it would still reduce the performance of your system significantly. But like if you utilize like salary, since salary can even run in like, it can horizontally scale, meaning you can, even connect multiple machines to run like your tasks when the salary has this kind of capability. So now you, if you integrate salary and you define your task and then you execute it and then like there is be a message queue, then you just have to wait, just keep like maybe at some time interval, if there is any update to like that task, you just keep listening and salary would perform the task and give you the result at the end. Uh, like salary supports multiple uh, like message brokers, like the message brokers are the ones that are used like to communicate with salary, uh, like RabbitMQ and Redis. Uh, for this example, uh, I have set up like first, uh, I have Redis running on my machine, like if you see here, like Redis is running. Can you can you increase your uh, in your okay. terminal? It's very small. Yeah, one more and then yeah, that's yeah, that's good. Redis is running uh, and like it's uh, in the readme, like in the readme file for this project, like. Here is how you would run it. It, it would just download uh, an already existing Redis image uh, and then run it in your local machine. Uh, and then what you have to do is define your salary task. Uh, so for a, this is a, just a simple salary task. Uh, we are using for the backend and also the broker. We're just using Redis. Uh, so like the backend is like where it would be storing the like the message. So like it's a memory like. So Redis is really like basically most of the time Redis would be used for like in for memory purposes. And sometimes like if it is in production, maybe you would be using for the broker RabbitMQ, but you can still use Redis for both cases. And like, this is like how you would be defining your task. Like it's just the same function. There is much difference. But these functions can be asynchronous or I operation they can they would it, they wouldn't be like significantly impacting your system performance even if they are like cpu intensive uh, then here we just import our two functions uh, and then we have here we have gateway result async which we 
does like checks like if the result is ready. So if the result is ready, we print the result. Uh, if the result is not ready, we just wait one another second and check again. Uh, then like we run these two tasks like multiply and add together. So as you can see here, like multiply takes three seconds, add takes five seconds. This just to simple to simulate and then we run them like to run them first we have to run the salary task okay now the salary task is ready now you can start communicating with it as you can see like received then the first is completed then the second gets completed Okay, so if you don't have any specific question here, we can move on. It seems your tutorial is super clear. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, integrating uh, OpenAI asynchronously. So, like the thing we have seen earlier about OpenAI is just making a simple request to OpenAI. But in a normal scenario, like when you make a request, like let's say it's a chat completion, uh, like if the chat completion is like a lot of tokens, like you would specify like maximum tokens you would want to receive, right? Say, like it. You, it can give you like I think uh, up to one hundred thousand or something, but like for completion, it might not be that much. Anyways, like to get the whole result, it would take you like significant amount of time. So like, for example, if it's chat application, like if we since they provide a capability of like in streaming responses, like if you can listen to the stream then like you'll be getting like every little bit of updates like as as the like the chatbot can display those responses like as it receives from like the api service so like here like this is using the open AI api like we turn we let the stream through okay and then then here we have a function for processing the stream, meaning like every little bit of update will be listening and then we'll just make a printer. As you can see, like we are getting updates. So like, in your project, this might be like useful or might not be like depending on your like current implementation. But like for example, if like you need to like try, this is your generating text, right? So like for example, when it gener like let's say you are generating SQL syntax, then like if probably like if there is going to be an issue like within the syntax like you don't have to like maybe wait for like the whole response to get to you like you might be able to like listen to every update and if there is an issue then you don't need to like listen to the whole thing and then like take any action you want to take okay so yeah, basically, I think we have covered most of the things in this tutorial. So, like, I've already talked about, like, how Redash utilizes salary, like, for running uh, your queries in background and how those wouldn't be blocking. Yeah. Uh, so, basically, if you have any question, like regarding everything is okay, uh, or how you might be able to apply them.
in, in this task you are working on. Uh, he need the link to the repository uh, if you are able to control. Okay, uh, that's a good question. Like, if there are dependencies between two functions, like that is like you need a better design. Like, sometimes like you need precise. You pretty much need the output of the first function to perform like the second function as an input to the second function. Uh, in that case, like you can't do anything. But still, like why does the first function is running? Uh, you can utilize that time to perform different tasks and even let's say like it's a web application you can't do anything but like rather than just like the web page being stuck because of a background running process uh, you can like show some animations like saying like something is happening that might be helpful right so even in that case like you might use that time or like to be able to like show some animations or some inform the user. But like if two functions depend on each other, like yes, you can't really do much. Okay. Can you clarify what you meant by verbose logging? The question is, is the streaming like a verbose logging? I don't know what that means. Anyways, uh, streaming is like just like from the word, it's a stream, like rather than like you send a response at once, it's a socket connection between like the client and the server and then like the response can be streamed rather than sending it all in once okay when integrating open asynchronously there might be a delay in response for a given request in that context does the choice of database type such as Redis or Postgres have a significance. Redis is actually really fast. So, I mean, like, in ter since it's a, a, a memory, like, every data is stored in memory in Redis. Uh, and, uh, like, it is used for some time session, storing session data and things like that. And what you probably do is, like, for example, if you are building a big system, you would use pages for fast response, and but like to store your data for a longer time, you would be using Postgres. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, if you don't really have. Okay. Hello, okay, yes. I remember that uh, the definition of async in um, Python and uh, in notebook is a little bit different. So, could you um, explain it quickly that again? Because it was not clear in my mind. Thank you. Okay. So like in async programming, like there is an event loop that has, uh, like then you'd have your functions, like which would be called like coroutines. And then like that event loop would be running like every function, like it step by step. And now the thing is like in a notebook, like the way it was like developed, there is an already existing event loop that's running. And basically, when you are using notebook, like it's not really expected that you would run asynchronous code in there. So like, basically, if you try to run asynchronous code normally in a notebook, you'd get an error because you will try to create an event loop. It would say like, ah, there is an already existing event loop. So basically that was like a workaround uh, to use like the already existing event loop in a notebook to be able to like add your core routine there and then it would also run your core routine. So that was just a workaround like to demonstrate things in a notebook. But like normally when you write your async code, it would be like just a normal script. And then you wouldn't need that function. If anyone else have any other question, you can speak up. If not, uh, should we end this session? Can you give me a thumbs up?